Hello and welcome to Rolling in Mills, the film show about... I still haven't come up with a catchphrase yet, but I talk about films. I talk about old films. And today we actually have the not-so-old film, the 2008 Ari Fulman Waltz with Bashir. Now, this is a film essentially about a topic that I actually studied in school, about the Israeli semi-invasion of Lebanon and the various humanitarian and very ethical questions that come up with that, where the Israelis essentially killed a lot of people in Lebanon, a lot of innocent people, to try to get to some PLO people, and everything kind of hit the fan a little bit in that regard. I'm not going to go into that too deeply because this is mainly about the film, but it is a period that is very very interesting and I'd highly recommend just reading about it if you already haven't. Now this film is very strange in terms of its premise. Essentially this is a documentary about the period I just talked about but it's animated though in a weird kind of noirish rotoscoping way and I don't think I've ever heard of that before. Obviously animation is a fundamental part of filmmaking but I don't think I've ever seen or even heard of a documentary that's been animated and a proper documentary not like a Fox documentary but it actually really really works with this because a lot of what this film talks about is the aftermath of Lebanon and the experience of Israeli soldiers and dealing with like the horrors of war essentially and to do that he needs to go into a lot of these people's dreams and the kind of horrific sequences they have and that works really really well when it's animated because you know in a standard documentary you're not going to be able to really fully realize the extent of like hallucinations that people have and such and such as well as the full scale of the actual war itself. Like, a reenactment is really never going to do when you can just show a full animated version of essentially what's happening, or a kind of weird, like, stylized version of it. On top of that, this film has a brilliant soundtrack that I won't really go into, but it just fits perfectly with the tone of the film, and is synced really nicely, and is exquisitely picked. Fantastic. Overall, this film's a really interesting look into war and all its themes. War is essentially a very easy and rich, dense topic to discuss, but this film discusses it and explores it very well in a way I haven't really seen before. Normally, you don't get to kind of look into the immediate visual psyche of the people involved. Normally, it's the very emotional side. You'll get that in a film like Apocalypse Now, where you very much get an exploration of all the characters, like you get an exploration of Kurt's character and Michael Sheen's character, and there's even a shot copied from Apocalypse Now in Waltz with Bashir, so I think there were some influences there at least. It also has that kind of power crazed war insanity vibe going into it except for the fact that it's actually very true even though Apocalypse Now is obviously based on true events in the Vietnam War this is like direct anecdotes from people about some of the crazy crazy shit that happened during that period from both sides obviously there's a lot of fantastic and really kind of haunting memorable scenes in this film particularly one about this guy talking about how his entire squad died and essentially he had to swim for kilometers to get back Back to the Israeli base and it's just visually it's portrayed so brutally and so well that's essentially what the film could be kind of classified as it's kind of a series of very very well-made really interesting vignettes intersected by equally interesting stories from people and these chats that Ari Fulman who was actually in the war him discussing with his friends and his squad members about what actually happened and his whole thing is that he kind of had like a disassociation from the events of the war he said he couldn't remember anything so part of the the film has been talking with a psychologist about how people interact with war and how people deal with insanity, death, violence, and such. Now I'm going to go into mild spoilers here, and I think it's really integral to talk about this part of the film because it's fascinatingly interesting, but if you haven't seen it then I wouldn't recommend watching this. I haven't really explained enough to ruin the film at all, and I would highly recommend it. If you're averse to things that are disturbing or violent, especially real life violence, then I wouldn't recommend watching this film, but besides that, even if you don't know anything about the period, it's still a really, really interesting look into the human psyche and war and all of its themes. Okay, so spoilers are up now. Now, there's a really, really interesting kind of meta commentary in the film about how we view war as an audience kind of through a lens. Relating back to Ari Fulman disassociating from the war and not being able to remember anything about it really, or not even remembering being there, a psychologist talks about a photographer who went to the war and saw all this crazy crazy shit, but he was able to avoid it by essentially saying, I am not the person in this war. I'm looking at the war through my camera, through a filter, and it's not me that's experiencing these things. I'm just going on a holiday to Lebanon. All of this stuff is totally fine. And obviously that's 
a horrible coping method even though it's a relatively effective one but eventually she was saying that it kind of got too much in terms of like the civilian body count and all the crazy shit like there was kind of the beginning of a genocide essentially where they were just shooting civilians on the street and it kind of got too much with this guy and she was saying that his camera broke his lens broke and he just went a little bit nuts after that and he kind of had to deal with the full force of everything in the war up to that point all at once. That idea is really relayed back in terms of the fact that as an audience watching the film, we never see any actual real footage of the war until the very, very end where it actually shows full-on graphic footage of the war. They're just a bunch of dead people in rubble and a bunch of people crying. And that is such an interesting commentary because the animation serves the dual purpose there of showing the horrors of war in terms of the inner psyche, in terms of these hallucinations and dream sequences that characters have. For example, Ari Fulman has this really interesting, beautifully shot sequence where he's lying in a beach at level on and the lighting is just exquisite there's other characters hallucinations and visions that really contribute to the general feeling of the film but it's so interesting to see the whole film being animated and you're seeing all these horrors but they're not really happening it's not even a fake portrayal of real life it's not real actors real cameras actually reenacting these things it's just animation and there's a level of removal almost like we're looking through the camera that the guy had but then at the end of the film of course the camera breaks the animation stops and we see real life and you're able to fully kind of absorb the real horror of the film essentially that's just such an interesting way to play with the form of film for the purpose of exploring a theme and I absolutely love that. There's a really, really interesting scene in Waltz of Bashir that actually relates to the title in which someone is having a waltz of death and they're dancing around and spraying a machine gun while Bashir, who is the leader in Lebanon, looks over him because there's this iconograph everywhere. Overall, I'm feeling an 85 out of 100 on this one. Really fantastic, very, very interesting film. If you want to see my other film reviews, you can look at them down there. A Gia the Wrath of God has a kind of similar tone to Apocalypse Now because it influenced it and I would highly recommend that. Other films, great. Check them out. And uh, have a lovely day. Au revoir.